they tell you that there's a fibroid curing tea or a fibroid melting tea or when you take this medication it will melt the fibroid uh, as an expert what is your opinion on that sir there are so many things we hear very many the things we hear even god will be shocked at what we hear <laughs> it's very difficult what we hear there's nothing you will not hear some women even come to the clinic with some some drinks and so many things you know um we've had cases where we had you make a diagnosis you first of all go back to a trade medical home they have some you know vaginal uh helps the inside do all sort of things until they make it even more difficult for the person to do at a particular time it's a common thing we have in this environment particularly those of us who practice within this rural uh, environment is very common so as you can see if you look at the pathophysiology you know that there's nothing you drink that will make anything where would they come from now from the mouth of here from which vessel will they go into the uterus and, and then you know is it except they are doing embolization traditional they will they, they find a way to go and block uterine vessels and prevent the the fibre from further growth. it's not there it's not there most of these things are really more injurious more harmful to these women than you know having to come for proper assessment and reassessment it's important to let them know that yes yes there are certain medications we can give you we will give you those medications and they will string that fibroid mass and these medications are well documented you know we have general heat we have oral pill we have all sorts of hormonal medications we could give it will string this fibroid over some time although they could regrow they could it could give the woman an ample time to prepare for whatever you know she wants to have so they must make themselves available in the hospital and then for proper care to be given not looking for all the money they will spend for that it may just be enough to give a permanent solution to their problem that's the way i see it because by the time they have gone and they spent over 300 to 400 000 naira. and in common good hospitals you know government-owned hospitals fibrous surgery are not as high as that they are not that expensive uh -huh. Except in some private facilities, you could have fibroid of pressure of close to two million. At some 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 hospital, you can have, you know. But good hospital, federal government owned institution, it is difficult to find, you know, performing this procedure for, for more than many cases less than two hundred fifty thousand naira. You don't need. You get what I mean? They are not as expensive as people think. Uh -huh. So they should just come and get a better care, proper evaluation, proper diagnosis. And because there are differentials you also need to rule out. If a woman, mm. age of 45 and 55, telling you that she's having a fibroid, she's going to you know, get medication somewhere, you should know that it's not fibroid you'll be thinking of first. The woman who is over 50 years, 55 years coming to you. Not every abdominal swelling is a fibroid. That's what some of them don't know. A woman keeps having um, contact quarter bleeding. She's having sex with her husband. She's bleeding from the vagina. Having offensive discharge. The vagina keep coming with the bleeding, particularly at contact. Either when she's trying to clean her vagina or she's trying to, you know, meet with her husband or spouse and notice that she's bleeding. And it goes on where it takes fibroid you have and all that. There are so many things you would think of. Malignancies are also common at that age. So for some of those women, we must be able to rule out that it's not this. It's not just this fibroid this person has. If it's the fibroid, we will know. That's why that clinical evaluation is very key. Every swelling in the abdomen and bleeding is not always fibroid. And they must also understand the most of the things you go to all these herbal places for to go and take medication and say I have fibroid. It's not. It's not usually so. You must get proper evaluation in the hospital and get um, a good and effective treatment. Not just going around to start sipping everything you have. There are some questions here, but um, most of these questions have, uh, I think, uh, Chief have actually answered them. And one of them is just answered them within the space. When he's talking now one one of the questions i'm saying is that is there any room or safe cure for fibroid 
Then, okay. Should I, should I say the next question? Okay. Yeah, say the next question. Okay. He said, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for the question, uh, for the lecture. Uh, if, if the woman is satisfied with giving birth and a surgery is carried out on her to remove her womb, is there a 100% chance that the fibroid will not grow, grow back? Like I, like I mentioned earlier, when we started this um, discussion. I said the definitive cure is cure for a fibroid is removal of the womb. Once the womb is removed, it's removed. Fibroid will not grow anywhere again. Because fibroid is um, a tumor, a mass that is growing in the womb. So once the womb is removed, fibroid will not come from anywhere again. It's finished. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay. so once you remove it, it's his definitive cure. If a woman has completely her family size, if the fibroid becomes so symptomatic, then remove the fibroid. Remove, remove the, womb. the womb. Yes, you remove, remove the, the womb. womb. Yeah. Yes, you remove the womb. So if remove the womb. Okay. It simply means that once the womb is not there, there is no more fibroid because the fibroid no grows fibroid. in the womb. Yeah. Yes, okay, exactly. The reason why we perform a conservative surgery is fertility sparing. The fact that the woman has not so completed her family. Yes. Yes, those that want to preserve the function yes. of their of their age, or particularly for fertility reasons. Although in this part of the world, I will tell you that I want to continue to be in my period. I want to continue to menstruate. I want to have my wound back in my next life. You know, people can say all sorts of things, but the primary reason is to preserve the reproductive function of the woman. Yeah. Those people that always say they want to see their menstruation is because they believe that <laughs> menstruation is bad blood. So if the bad blood is not removed in their body, they, they believe that they are not okay. Okay, this other question mm -hmm. says, can a woman who removed this fibro conceive after delaying for more than four years after the operation? Well, like I mentioned earlier, fibroid is not just the only cause of inability to get pregnant. Inability to conceive is a couple problem. Couple means it's not just the man alone. It's not just the woman. It's not just the woman alone. Factors tend from both the man and the woman. So when you are evaluating the cause of inability to get pregnant, you might be able to, to, to check the man, look at the sperm, if the sperm is okay, if the sperm can actually fertilize an egg. That's one way to look at the man. The second thing you look at is the other factors in the woman. The factors are not just the womb alone. These factors will also range from the tube of the woman. Are the tube open? If tubes are not open, it means the sperm cannot come out from the tube to fertilize the egg that are released from the ovary. The woman still will not be able to get pregnant even when you have removed the fibroid in that woman. It's also possible that this fibroid surgery, if it's not properly performed, the woman can develop adhesions. Adhesion. And once the woman develop adhesion, the tube can become blocked. The endometrial cavity of the womb can also become compromised. The woman can develop intrauterine adhesions, adhesions within the cavity of the womb. And getting pregnant now becomes difficult for the woman. That's why when you are performing fibroid surgery, there has to be someone who can actually do it. Someone who can who, who has been trained, who knows how to perform fibroid surgery. Not just somebody you are meeting on the road or just a doctor. It's doctors are specialized in different aspects. So you must be able to know the person you are taking yourself to to perform that procedure because it could compromise your fertility potential if it's not properly done. And in some cases and in many cases, if fibroid was the only cause of your inability to get pregnant and you are married, once the fibroid is properly done, within two, one to two years, you must get pregnant. If, if, if that fibroid was the major delay, the major problem, except there are other issues that have been there. So the woman had to be fully evaluated, fully, fully checked to be sure that other factors are not there. That are causing the inability to get pregnant. It's asking me on TikTok, I think we said it before, 
she missed it so she's asking what are the causes of fibroid so let's take it together sir what are okay. the causes of fibroid a brief recap and at what age is a woman at risk of getting fibroid iris oh okay okay all right i mentioned that the real cause why those why a woman will just begin to grow certain tumors certain swelling on her womb is not really known you know but there are predispositions there are certain things that could predispose a woman from developing such tumors in the womb one of it is we we black blacks black being a black a black woman you, the ch your chances of developing some of these things are already dead chances are high of developing some of these fibers so that genetic factors comes in that's also where familiar predispositions comes in like you had the sister who had a fibroid your mom had a fibroid you were a twin and all that if you have a familiar history of fibroid the chances that you have a fibroid is also very high outside that women in reproductive age group the, the, the fibroid is common in women within their reproductive age group, within women between 15 to 49 years of age. You will find fibroid because the, the, the growth of this fibroid is hormone dependent. And what are these hormones? Estrogen and progesterone. These are the hormones. They potentiate the growth of this fibroid mass. Outside this, women who are obese, Obesity, women who have very high weight are more likely to develop fibre compared to women with lower body mass indices. It's common among them because they elaborate some of these hormones more than just the slimmer women. So cutting down weight is one of the things those women can do to avoid some of these risks which are associated with some of these things they could have. Apart from this, Apart from this, there are certain hormonal therapies some women will take over time that will eventually predispose them to having, um, to developing fibroids. Some of those hormones are there. And then there are also some pelvic infections. Women who have recurrent pelvic inflammatory diseases or other pelvic infections could have um, uterine, there's an association between developing uterine myoma, uterine fibroid, and pelvic inflammatory infections. The precise how it happens is still not clear, but this association has been demonstrated. That it's been found that it's common, it's also very common in such women. So outside obesity, pelvic infection, women in reproductive age group, genetic predisposition, family lines, a mother has fibroid, sister had fibroid, you had a twin that had fibroid, and nulliparity, if you have not given birth before, if you are 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 40, you haven't given birth, the chances are also higher that the womb will continue to find a way, you know, to grow some of these fibroids that are there. So the chances are also higher in people we call um, nulliparous women. Nulliparous men are women who have not given birth at all before. And then women who enter and uh, who start menstruating very early women who start menstruating very early also have a higher chances of developing fibroid as compared to women who enter menopause very early a woman who have premature menopause is less likely is less likely to develop more complications of uterine fibroid than a woman who has having delayed age at achieving menopause so Early menarche, which is um, a woman who starts menstruating very early, you know, there are also predispositions to developing some of this uh, uterine fibroid. Is it possible that a lady can say, okay, I want to prevent, I don't want to come down with fibroid? Thank you. It's a very difficult question. Fibroid is very difficult to prevent, to prevent because in many cases it's sporadic. You won't really have anything to just do about it. It will happen if it wants to happen. Like I mentioned earlier, um, I told you that over 70% of people have this, at least a fibrous seedling. 
So it's really not something you could prevent, but like modify, there are some risk factors you could modify. One of those risk factors is reducing the risk of developing, of being obese, of getting too, too, too fat. You know, that in itself may not really prevent you from developing the uterine fibroid. It may just only slow down the growth of some of these fibroids if they are there. You know, because if you don't elaborate mo most of these hormones, estrogen and progesterone, the chances are very slim that, you know, these fibroids will grow well. So, so these are some of the things one needs to consider. But trying to prevent it from not happening is almost impossible to do. It's difficult I'm to right, actually... I'm asking, um, um, how about diet and food? Is there any relationship between uh, the diet and food? Does, is there any food that you eat that makes the fibroid grow? Many cases, there are some food that contain some phytoestrogens. There are some food that contains, contains some phytoestrogens, some fat containing that. Any food that will increase your weight. Like I have been saying now, weight control is one of the ways to reduce, um, you know, high, 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 elaboration of some of these estrogen and progesterone that causes the growth of some of these fibroids. That's the only way. Fibroid is difficult to to prevent you know so just what you tell so many people in many instances that you have to be moderate in what you are eating reduce all fatty diet take more fiber diet and all that that's still the general slogan otherwise there's no specific diet you will take that you say yes this is what i will take to prevent me from having fiber as well i advise people go and eat if the fiber want to hit you it will hit you just eat and enjoy yourself you know but try and be moderate try not to gain weight so much you know whatever you can do to either lose weight or prevent yourself from becoming too 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 heavy you know we also help in preventing some of these morbidities just, yes he was asking is it just to suppress the symptoms is there any medication that can actually cure i'm using in his word cure the fiber or the medications yeah. are just to shrink and keep the symptoms under control? Now, uh, there is no medication per se that could cure fibroids. Now, look at this instance. A woman who is around her perimenopausal period, if you use certain medication, may take her to a point that she will stop menstruating. Mm. Suppress her ovary so well that she will stop ovulating. It will suppress these hormonal influences on the fibroid, those fibroids will shrink, they will stop growing. Once you enter menopause, those estrogen and progesterone are at a very low level that can't really cause much of this fibroid growth. growth. And the woman may not have the need to, 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 to be performing surgery to control the problems of the fibroid. That's on one hand. But in every other aspect, it's just to suppress the symptoms and reduce the mass of the fibroid, even to make it easily opera operatable, you know, by the gynecologist who is going to operate the, who is going to perform the procedure, particularly when the fibroid has been so massive. So basically it's to control symptoms, basically to control symptoms until such a time that surgery becomes feasible to actually carry out on the patient. But there are, there are medications you can take to control the symptom for a very, very long time. A very, very long time. Control the symptom very well, you know, until um, the, the patient either get pregnant, either get pregnant, or is now ready to perform the procedure. What is asking, sir? He says, uh, what is the best advice for someone that have had fibroid operation? Okay. Um, I really would want to mention this so much. Uh, what I will say is that if a woman who is strongly desirous of getting pregnant just had a fibroid surgery, the woman should make effort to get pregnant. Now, if the fibroid, if the pregnancy is not coming, still after six months, after one year of performing this surgery, and the woman has investigated herself, have investigated the husband and there's nothing seems to be 
you know, causing the, this inability to get pregnant again. Such women should seek alternative way to actually get pregnant. You have waited for one year, it's going to two years. So it's better to begin to plan alternative ways. One of such ways is assisted conception. Because um, um, such procedures are actually performed, are better, the successes are better when the fibroids are not there. There's no need waiting for a long time again, you know, before you start thinking of having such procedure done. Once that procedure is done, you've spent one year, it's not coming, second year pregnancy is not coming. After two years, you begin to think of an alternative way to actually get that pregnant in. And um, fibroid surgery, it really, it doesn't, doesn't really kill. Yes, I saw, as I heard somebody, I, at least I saw a question on that, really. Yes. It, yes. it wouldn't really kill you, except you meet a person who is not experienced in performing this procedure. Yes, complication could arise, you know. The person may lead to more blood transfusion because it could be very bloody and the patient could be giving blood. It could lead to even ureteric injuries, bladder injuries, boy injury, but those can easily be repaired without causing permanent disability on the woman. Uh, so the worst that could happen is if the person bleeds too much and the fibroid probably was multiple, cervical, is you know, probably difficult to actually remove fully. It may end up, the person may end up removing the womb and keeping the patient alive. Such can happen. But to see a person dying for fibroid is not, is particularly when performed by somebody who knows what he's doing. We have a 